4.2 properties of rational functions. Here's a definition of a rational function. It's a function of the form r of x is p over x divided by qx, and p and q are polynomial functions, and q cannot be the zero function. Um, some important notes that I'd like you to think about here is so a rational function, okay, it has um, it has a fraction, I guess I can say that, so the word fraction and rational are sort of connected. And uh, the numerator is a polynomial, but so is the denominator. So both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials. And we know a little bit now about polynomial functions by looking at the degree, and uh, looking at turning points and behavior and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, and then clearly, because it, it is a fraction, the denominator cannot equal zero. Okay? All right. So let's look at just the domain first for a couple of things. So find the domain of the following rational functions. So here's a rational function, x squared minus 4, x plus 4. The domain here is just going to be determined by x plus 4. x plus 4 cannot equal 0. So that means that x cannot equal a negative 4. So the domain here would be all real numbers, except x cannot equal negative 4. Okay. Make it a little more difficult. So here we have a rational function, and the bottom is a trinomial. Um, I have a feeling that that one probably factors. So. That's x plus 6 times x plus 2, I believe. Okay. So can you just cancel the x plus 6 as when you talk about the domain? No, you cannot. Because the trinomial in the bottom is given to you as a trinomial, the x plus 6 is a factor. And that means that x plus 6 cannot equal two or 0, which means x cannot equal a negative 6. And x plus 2 can't equal 0. So that means, or the fact that x plus 2, that means that x cannot equal the negative 2. So you still have to consider both of them, even though you can simplify this into 1 over x plus 2. Okay, but we can say that 1 over x plus 2 and x plus 6 divided by x squared plus 8x plus 12, you cannot say that they act exactly the same. They do, except for this one value over here, except for when x is a negative 6, because one of them exists, 1 over x plus 2, and the other one does not. Okay, next one. Keep in mind, I said only the denominator matters. So, x squared plus 2 cannot equal 0. Well, that means that x squared cannot equal a negative 2, which never happens, because when you square a number, you always get a positive. So, this one has a domain of all real numbers. So, sometimes rational functions have a domain of all real numbers. So, technically, this is a rational function. I don't really like this one uh, as a rational function. It's given to you as a rational function because that's a 3. Um, but I could write that as 1 third x squared minus 9 divided by 3 is 3. So, I think this is more of a quadratic. And a quadratic clearly has a domain of all real numbers. Okay, now the last one, x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. Um, and I think we're back over here because you can factor the top and the bottom here. So, x squared minus 2 x plus 2, x minus 2, and then this one would be an x plus 2. So you could cancel that. But same story as I had over here on b. x plus 2 is not allowed to be 0, so x cannot equal a negative 2. So this, while well, that thing ends up acting a lot like x minus 2, so the straight line x minus 2 will be very similar to this, except in this one location. In this one location, the domain does not exist for the rational function, and it would clearly exist for the linear. So there's a small difference there. And we'll see that later in another section. Okay, let's look at a graph of uh, 1 over x squared. Um, pick that one. Well, I didn't pick it. The book picked it. But it, it's very similar to 1 over x, except we have something that's squared in the bottom. And that means the following. That means that, you know, well, I guess I should first do this part. x squared can't equal 0, right? So x cannot equal 0. So you can't plug in a 0, but you could plug in a 1, for example. When you plug in a 1, you get 1. When you plug in a 2, you get 1 over 4. So that's there already. That means that if you plug in 1 over 4, you should get 2. 
So this particular graph hugs the x's x-axis and the y-axis pretty quickly. Um, because that's a square, when you do this with negatives, you don't get negative values anymore. You actually get positive values all the way across here. So here's the graph of 1 equals or 1 over x squared. So it's a little different than 1 over x. Okay. But that's pretty symmetric. It is symmetric. Didn't do a great job. That's good enough. Um, if you know this graph, then this particular rational function you can graph based on transformations. And this is one reason we did spend a good deal of time on transformations. So if I start with 1 over x squared, how do I make this say 1 over x minus 3 squared? Okay, well that's a shift to the right of 3 units, right? And then if I have 1 over x minus 3 squared, how do I make it come out as 1 over x minus 3 squared plus 2? Well, the plus 2 would be a shift of up 2, because it's a lot of a shift. So let's see if I can do that on that same graph. So shift right 3, so 1, 2, 3, and then shift up 2, so 1, 2. So, what happens here is that you have a new coordinate system that now looks like this. With this is your, your y-axis that was moved, and that was the x-axis that was moved up too. So that means that if you go up one, or if you move over one, you get a dot here. And so this is going to be very close to the graph that we should have had here. So same shape but shift it up into the right three. Okay? Transformations allow you to graph a bunch of stuff, even if you're not really sure what happens. Um, what happens with the value of the function, so the one that I have over here, when the x value is just under three? So just under three, it looks like the, the y value is, is going up very, very quickly. Um, so let's let's pick a value just under three. So let's pick two point nine 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 nine. Well, what happens if I plugged in as my this is my x? Well, I would get one divided by two point nine 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 minus three, and then I'm going to square that, and then I'm going to add two. So I get. 0 0.1231 squared plus 2. Well, that's 1 divided by a very small number, which is a big number, but that's actually a very small number squared, which makes it an even bigger number when you divide this out. Okay, because I could have uh, 1, 2, 3, 10,000 of these go into 1, and then 10,000 squared is how many will go into it after you square it. So this ends up being a super big number. A very large number, which is usually given with an infinity. What happens if you do this with a value just over 3? Oh, I forgot something important there. Um, and I did this in my head a little bit, because it doesn't really matter. This is actually a negative, right? So if that's a negative, does that influence the story? So not really, because the negative is now being squared. It's a positive, so you get a very, very large positive number. Sorry about that. So what happens if I pick a number that's, you know, just over 3? Well, you end up with the same story, don't we? We end up with 3.001 minus 3 squared plus 2, which is now we're at the positive 1 that I just <coughs> accidentally used. So we still get a very, very large number. So both of these are going to go to infinity. Well, that is the definition that we're going to use in terms of a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptotes occur when you are really close to the value and you need to go to a positive or a negative infinity. Um, what happens to the function when the x value goes to positive infinity and or negative infinity? So now the x value becomes super large, negative or super large positive. Okay, you can already see here that I'm trying to tell you it's going to approach this line over here. I'm not using the value of the line, 
So let's pick a very large number for x. So let's pick, for example, a thousand. That's a pretty large number. So I'm going to do one divided by a thousand. You know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to pick a thousand and three because a thousand and three after I subtract three is easy to work with. So what happens if I pick a thousand and three? And then I do minus three, and then I square it, and then I add two. So I get one divided by one thousand squared. And one divided by one thousand is already very small. I would barely add anything to the two, but when you square the one thousand, it's super small. One divided by a million is a whole bunch of zeros and then a one. So I'm going to argue that this basically goes to two. And if I do this on the negative side, okay, and then I have to be somewhat smart here, so let's pick close to a thousand, but you know, negative 977. When I subtract three from there, I'll be exactly at a thousand, which that's an easier number to work with. Um, well, I'll be at a negative thousand, but when I square this, what happens? Well, you still get a positive here. So again, I'm at two and I'm adding a tiny, tiny little number to it. So I'm going to be at two. So both of these go to 2, and then that would be called the horizontal asymptote. And I forgot the right here, so this was the vertical asymptote. Okay, so there is obviously a fancy definition for that, and we'll look at that here. So let R denote any function, a polynomial function, and if the following happens, when x goes to a negative infinity, or when x goes to a positive infinity, if the function approaches, and if for some reason this one's backwards, here's your negative infinity approach, and here's your positive infinity approach. When x becomes really, really large, either positive or negative, we're approaching this line over here. Well, then that line is called a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Um, it, you can cross a horizontal asymptote. Okay? It is possible to cross a horizontal asymptote. And the reason for this is that a horizontal asymptote deals with end behavior of the x. It starts off by saying, if x goes to either a positive or a negative infinity. So when x is small, and it's small could be anything, but you know, even yeah, 1, 2, 5, 10, negative 20, things like that, you can cross a horizontal asymptote. The vertical asymptote is then sort of the, the opposite. The vertical asymptote is um, as x approaches a value, so in x approaches, in this case, let's say x is approaching a negative 3, the values of our polynomial I'm sorry, our values of our rational function are approaching infinity. And we'll talk about limits later on in the year, but that's basically what this is saying. The limit of x going to a value. So as a limit basically is asking you to get closer and closer and closer to this negative 3. So as you get closer and closer to negative 3, the function keeps going up higher and higher. So this is a vertical asymptote. You don't have to have the same thing happen on both sides. So we saw this picture with like the x, well, we did it with the minus 3, so it was on the other side. But this could look work for 1 over x plus 3 squared. Then at a negative 3, you would get a function that goes up to infinity. And that has a little bit to do, or a little bit, that has everything to do with that being an even number. If you have an even multiplicity here, so the squared makes this an x plus 3 an even multiplicity, then you have the same end behavior. So this is an odd multiplicity. So here we are looking at, for example, x minus 3. It could be to the first, it could be to the fifth, and we would get something like this. Um, I think it's right because on the right we go up and on the left we go down. So yes, that makes sense. So when the function is really big, we are positive. When the function is really small, we go to negative infinity. And that would be the official definition sort of, of like vertical and horizontal asymptotes. All right. The next part then is how do you find these? So asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, you can find by writing your rational function in its lowest terms. So the lowest terms means you do want to now cancel out. So when we did this with the domain, we didn't talk about lowest terms. 
For domain, you look at the whole function. For asymptotes, you look at its lowest terms. And what we're going to look for is zeros in the denominator. Okay, so find vertical asymptotes if they have it for the graph of each rational function. Okay, is this factors as much as possible? So yes. So what cannot happen here is that 3 plus x cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal a negative 3. So there is a vertical asymptote. at x is a negative 3. Okay, so if you were to graph this, you know that this graph has a vertical asymptote here. I'm usually showing with the dotted line, or usually you have to show them. Okay, next one. How about this particular one? Well, here, x plus 2 cannot equal 0. That means that x cannot equal a negative 2, and x minus 2 is not allowed to be 0 either, so x cannot equal 2. So we actually have two vertical asymptotes. So in this case, we get vertical asymptotes at two spots, at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Okay, keep in mind that I'm not saying you can use x equals 2 and a negative 2, like I, I wasn't trying to imply that you can use a negative 3. This is the equation of the horizontal or the vertical line through 2, and then the next one is the vertical line through negative 2. Okay, <clears throat> next two, x minus 1, x squared plus 5x plus 4. So this is actually x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 times x plus 4. So nothing here cancels. So all these are important values. Well, that means that you get x plus 1 can equal 0. So it means x can equal a negative 1, and x plus 4 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal a negative 4. So again, two vertical asymptotes. So I usually abbreviate it with vertical asymptotes. Negative 1 and negative 4. Let's see if we get one where maybe we have some cancellations. I think this one we do. So the top here would be x plus 2 times x plus 1. And the denominator would be x plus 2 times x minus 2. So for asymptotes, you would cancel this, and we haven't talked about what happens here. We'll save that for another day. But we don't get an, we do not get an asymptote here at the plus two one. This one still you can have. So x cannot equal two. So this one has a vertical asymptote at x equals two. Okay. So please remember here that. This is not the same as a domain question. So for your domain, we look at all the zeros in the denominator. Okay, so that's for your domain. For asymptotes, so for vertical asymptotes, we look at zeros after you simplify. So you need to simplify as much as possible and then you can look at vertical asymptotes. Alright, thank you.